stinky diapers may be the ultimate problem to solve. Today's guest has a product that gets rid of the smell in diapers. It's a fantastic product, but it's also a great story. She got a deal on Shark Tank with Mark Cuban, and she shares some great learnings from the experience that will help any product marketer, whether they're planning to get onto the show Shark Tank or not. Are you looking for new ways to make your sales grow? You've tried other podcasts, but they don't seem to know. Harvest the growth potential of your product or service as we share stories and strategies that'll make your competitors nervous. Now, here's the host of the Harvest Growth Podcast, John LeClaire. Welcome back to the show. I'm really excited today to have on with us Regina Krishi. She's the founder of Diaper Dust. If you're a parent, going to be a parent, have ever been one, or we're a baby. We've all been smelly or ourselves or whatever, certainly have babies. And man, the diaper smell can be something that's really hard to overcome. Regina has invented a product that's really amazing to solve that problem for parents. Great gift idea. If you've got uh, people that you know that are pending, you know, babies that are coming, that kind of thing, or, or friends and family or yourself to use this product for sure. And uh, certainly has a great story to share with us as well. Regina, great great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for taking the time. Yeah, thank you for having me, John. So if you could explain a bit more to our audience, what is diaper dust and how does it work? So diaper dust is a diaper deodorizing powder that's utilized inside a soiled diaper before you roll it up and you throw it away in in a trash can. You can use a diaper pail, um, but we we definitely encourage people to just use their regular trash to really simplify the whole odor eliminating process. Um, it is a uh, charcoal based. So it's unlike any other deodorizing powder out there on the market. Um, you know, the normal powders will use a combination of baking soda and, and other deodorizers, fragrances, things to cover up. Uh, but what sets us apart is that activated charcoal. Uh, we, we utilize that. That's our powerhouse deodorizer is how I, how I refer to it. Um, but it's a, it's a very simple to use product. Um, and, and I created it to simplify the whole thing, um, you know, to eliminate all other products. You just need this one diaper deodorizing powder. And you were talking a little bit before the interview started, I've got four kids of my own. They're all out of diapers. Thank heavens at this point, but man, I've, I've been through that, that experience a lot. And diaper pails are, you know, maybe they take, keep the smell out of the bathroom, but when you're done and you take that outside, it's just not a pleasant thing to do. And it, we love our kids, right? And, and they're amazingly cute when they're babies, but the diaper changing experience and certainly storage experience, they're, they're not fun. So I'm, I'm grateful you've come up with this solution that, that works so well. <laughs> like, how did it's a great idea which one of those things like you know any parent knows like oh fantastic how did you personally know that you were on to something once you you know got to the point you're developing this into an actual product i well i i knew i was on to something when it worked i was yeah. like no matter what nobody can say this does not work so i was like i have to run with this um when and then my next you know big step was finding out that nobody else was doing it it started um, it, with me trying to solve my own problem of I had my son's diaper pail and, and his his wastebasket and it was just smelling up his entire room, lid open or closed. And <clears throat> and when I said, is anybody putting anything inside the diaper? And when that was the question that I was Googling and researching on my own and coming up with nothing, you know, that's when you go to the, to the patent attorney, that's when you really get the, you know, the big guns in research to find out, you know, am, am I really onto something? Could this be something, you know, incredible? So that, yeah, that was uh, when it worked. And then when I found out that nothing else like it was out there. That's fantastic. And then if we fast forward just a little bit with your business, you were just getting it really off the ground by the time you appeared on Shark Tank and got a deal with Mark Cuban. And you know, it's been very successful for your business. I mean, the first question I'll ask is, what, from my understanding, your, your sales were relatively low because you were still a very new business, which is not the norm either to get on the show or to get a deal with somebody. They, they want successful businesses, you know, easy, low risk investments that are already growing. That's typically what you see. So what what made you, you think, break through and get their attention to, to get on the show and get a deal? My hard work. that, And I know that sounds very simple, but... Um, one thing that I know sticks out to Mark particularly 
is somebody that gets it done. Somebody that's faced with a challenge and just does it, just does the work. And I was definitely willing to do that because, you know, I was restricted financially, you know, I was funding this myself. And so I had to be very autonomous in everything that I did. It's not like I could hire somebody to do, uh, to do the filling, you know, I had to do everything in my backyard. And so I think that my determination to, um, to bring this to fruition was what, uh, was what really motivated that deal. Um, I'll be honest. I mean, I was, <laughs> I was pretty surprised myself <laughs> when, when I got, you know, when I get the deal, I was like, what? like, this is, uh, this is against all odds of Shark Tank. You know, I'm a long, long time viewer of the show. So I knew that the odds were stacked against me getting out there on that carpet. I was like, you know, I told myself I wouldn't even apply to this show unless I had a lot of sales. But when my application was pulled, I looked at my numbers and I was like, well, I'm not there yet, but there, I'm not going to be given another chance. So let's go. Yeah. And what, so you talked about getting the deal. I think that's great advice on hard work, determination, and of course, a great product, right? But a great product's not enough, right? For people to believe in you, whether they're buying your product or investing in your business, they've got a, it, it's, it's part of what goes behind it, right? Which is you ultimately behind the business, really pushing it forward. So great product and great founder owner, right? That's, it's that combination that, that really makes a business successful. What do you think helped you get through the clutter of even getting their attention to get on the show in the first place? I think what really stood out to them is that I was very fast in my responses it, with every step that, or any, anything that they asked of me, it was like, okay, balls in your court. No, it's in yours. <laughs> you know, I would just, I, I got it done and I sent it back in. I was very diligent with the instructions that I read. Um, anything that, that I saw that they repeated, I was like, okay, that's very important. I have to make sure I do this. Um, I followed everything to a T and I mean, that's, that's what I would want somebody to be doing. I would want that respect of their time. Um, so I never, I didn't want to give, I never wanted to give them a reason to say no. So never give anybody a reason to say no. Yeah. <laughs> like she yeah. was too late. Like, no, I'm not too late. I got this to you on time. <laughs> and I think that advice goes well with consumer responses as well for small businesses and big businesses alike, but especially in the early stage of a business, the faster and better you are at responding to customers' questions, et cetera. A, it's going to give them a much better experience with, with your product and B, lead them to really have that affinity or connection with your brand to lead towards testimonials, towards word of mouth marketing, towards really getting out there and helping, helping grow your business as well. So that responsiveness, again, not just Shark Tank, but also in, in responding to customers. So Absolutely. once you're on, once you're on the show, what was the experience like? Oh, surreal. It was very surreal. I felt like two different people you know, when I'm standing on that carpet, um, the, the facade of me was really trying to stay calm. It was being professional, answering questions. And then behind me was, oh my gosh, this is, this is happening. Lori Grenier has diaper dust in her hands. You know, Mark is saying that it's, it's, it's working. And I just made Mr. Wonderful laugh. Like this was, I really felt like I was in a dream. And I was grateful for every single second. And even though, you know, I, I know everybody's seen it, but when they, when, you know, Barbara went out and Mr. Wonderful went out and Lori and Emma, even as they were going out in, in the back of my head, I was like, this is still awesome. And Mark is still in. So, <laughs> so it was That's very, awesome. oh, it was, um, it was absolutely amazing. And I wish... Uh, I, I do, um, I have anxiety just on a daily basis and I almost wish I could have just calmed myself down just a little bit more so I could have really taken it all in. Um, but all in all, it was a wonderful experience. You know, I, I work a lot with, uh, Bob Sercosta from HSN. A lot of my audience has, has heard him. They know him. He's the original pitch man. He's been on there for 40 years or something like I can't remember the number, 10,000 hours of live TV shopping, but he always talks about, he's like, the moment you get nervous or stop being nervous, I should say on live TV, recorded shows, whatever it might be, is really the, the time you should stop, right? 
part of the nervousness is because you care, right? And it can, if you channel it right, it can help you, right? And I think a lot of people talk about, you know, the words they use are blacking out. That's probably a little bit extreme, but it's like, you're so focused on being successful and having that uh, adrenaline rush that it keeps you performing well, but you do forget a lot about the experience, right? And it's, it helps you perform in the, in the minute, but luckily for you and for, for all of us, they recorded it. So you, yes. got, you can certainly see it afterwards. <laughs> Exactly. No, no, that, that's a great, that's a great way to put it. Um, as I kind of joke, I'm like, anxiety pays the bills. Anxiety makes me, yeah. makes me move. So yeah. yeah. Keeping you focused for sure. <laughs> yeah. So I, I know you can't share everything about you know, some of the confidential nature of the deal, et cetera, but um, at a, at least a high level, once you got your funding in place and received that, how, how many strings are, atti- are attached to that? Are you able to like, do you have to use the money for a very specific purpose, report back on everything, every little minutia that you do, or is there a lot of flexibility still in running the business? Um, as far as my deal with Mark, now I can't speak for all of his deals, but mine was a very simple, straightforward one. Um, I have all, all of the control really over, you know, the day, the day to day, um, you, you know, we stay in contact, um, you know, biweekly with via email and, and updating reports and updated sales numbers. And, and I can turn to him when I have questions about, you know, is this the right move? Do you feel like we're doing the right thing? Uh, because, you know, I, as I said on the, on Shark Tank, you know, this isn't my first language. So I need, I do need some of that reassurance, even though I'm very autonomous in the decision-making, I, I do need to hear this is okay. This is good. This is a good decision to make. Um, he also, he, it's me at least I'm assigned uh, kind of a, a, a team, um, Ansley, John and Ryan and Ansley is kind of my main contact. She's an investor with Mark Cuban companies and we stay in contact on, on a day daily basis. And uh, we set goals for initially it was uh, the co-packer, the manufacturing, you know, kind of the bones <laughs> of production. And right now we're in kind of our marketing plan and strategy um, process, because I don't know if you had kept up with, you know, our, our story from Shark Tank to pretty much mid July, but we were out of stock. We sold out for Shark Tank. I was able to fill bottles in between co-packers, um, but ultimately nothing was finalized until the end of July. I, you, you shared so many pieces of of uh, really helpful advice there. I want to unpack it a little bit. Uh, a couple of things is, one is your weekly reports. I think this is great advice. Now, for our audience, you know, not everybody wants to be on Shark Tank or should be or or, or will, whatever. Um, but I think there's still some great learnings there that really apply to everybody. So if you've got, whether it's a team, you're, you're reporting to an investment team and advisors and are helpers for you, but even if it's to yourself, right, that, that level of detail of doing financial reports on a regular basis down to the weekly level, very few people do that. I think it's great that you have that attention to detail. You see quickly what's going on in your business. You can notice problems or opportunities as as they arrive. So that that's one thing I want to mention and really bring up that I think is really helpful for any for everybody. Uh, you know, the other is is having a sounding board. For you, it's great that you've got Mark and his team, um, but everybody can have somebody, right? It's it's somebody that might be in a similar situation, a mastermind group, a mentor whatever it might be, but finding somebody that connects with you, it can be lonely running a business, right? You're, you're making all the decisions all by yourself. So just being able to, like you said, bounce ideas off other people that may be in a similar situation is, is again, great advice. So, and the last thing I'll mention, just kind of, again, that you reiterate that you mentioned was, was setting goals, right? Short-term and measurable and actionable goals to keep yourself moving forward. Again, whether you've got a team pushing you, your advisors, investors, or whether you're doing this to yourself or with yourself or with advisors, mentors, friends, mastermind, et cetera. Great advice there, I think, to, to really unpack and and uh, help your business. Yeah, so absolutely. And, and that's not something that's innate for me to, I'm not, I don't have a planner and I didn't have a planner. Now I do. And it's, 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 um, it's made me grow a lot, not just as a business owner and entrepreneur, but as a person, it's made me more organized. Oh, fantastic. Good to hear. What's next for your business? Oh, well, what's next (laughs) is we're trying to expand into like the single packet, um, uh, like single use diaper deodorizing packets to be even more travel friendly, um, to be more discreet. 
uh, we found, we put out a survey uh, because we were getting a lot of responses outside of the mommy baby market. And those responses were adult incontinence, um, ostomy care, pet care. And so I wanted, I want to offer a product that is more discreet than the, than our bottle, something that people that, you know, an adult user can just throw in a bag, um, and, you know, take with them to a public place, to a relative's home and be discreet about, you know, how they're deodorizing. You know, some, some family members, they don't know that, you know, their brother or sister has incontinence. They don't need to know either. So it's not, yeah. none of their business. So it's, you know, that's what I'm trying to offer, um, that part of our, our, um, consumer market. Love it. Not resting on the laurels of your current success, but realizing great opportunities to continue growing your business. That's that's fantastic. So are, th- are there any res- resources that you recommend that, you- that have been helpful, particularly for you and your business? Well, I started out using um, like a, the small business resources at the community college. Um, they're actually free in um, in every state. And and it was more to, you know, kind of get a basic uh, business plan, understanding a business plan, um, some market research. But of course, because it's free, it is limited. So, um, you know, other other things I just I just research. I just I use Google and I research and I market research. I use a lot of uh, Facebook groups to do market research Um, and some podcasts that I'll listen to. It's, it's actually a work life by Adam Grant. Um, I love listening to him, especially like, like I said before, like I'm a very anxious person and my mental health means a lot to me. And he's just very motivating, um, in that work life balance. Um, and actually your, your podcast after, um, you know, after I found out about it, I was like, how did I not know about this? This really is everything that I'm looking to start my day with, you know, I like to start my day listening to a motivating podcast, no matter who's talking, you know, to, and I can learn something from it. Um, so yeah, your harvest growth podcast, it's, it really, it's been a game changer. Oh, awesome. Glad to hear that. Thank you. I was, I swear I was not fishing for compliments, but <laughs> no, I, know you, I know you weren't, but I'll give credit <laughs> where credit is due. And, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm now a follower. Awesome. And I certainly can't take any credit. It, it comes down to having great guests like yourself on that. It's your stories that make the difference. And and, and this has been really helpful too. I, I, mean, I know for our audience, so they can they can learn a lot and grow from, from your experience. So my last question I'll ask you, is there, is there anything I didn't ask that you think would be helpful, Regina, for our audience? Um, well, it's mostly to know that, um, that this is a product that is you don't just have to use it for, you know, baby diapers. I certainly, my son is four and a half. He's out of diapers now. Uh, so you can use it for general trash deodorizing. You can use it to deodorize anything, you know, a, a trash receptacle, garbage disposal, um, any waste basket that has a liner in it, of course, because that charcoal. And a question that I get a lot is if people can use it in their litter boxes and where it is safe to use in your litter box. I would not use it in your litter box because the charcoal, you know, just, it it can be messy. It can get on your cat's paws. So please don't use it in your litter boxes. You can use it in your litter genie or in, you know, dirty litter uh, in, you know, after scooping it out. Uh, But please don't use it in a litter box that's being used. (laughs) That's good advice. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. (laughs) Well, for our audience, I do encourage everyone, please check out Regina's website, thediaperdust.com. For those of you that are driving, and it's in the show notes as always. And she's been generous enough to provide a, a, a discount or promo code. Again, if you use harvest growth, all one word, you'll get a 10% discount off of your purchase. And also be sure to check out harvestgrowth.com to see other episodes we've recorded. If you like this episode and want to learn more about how you can profitably grow your own consumer product business, please subscribe to our show and, and be sure to leave us a review. Regina, thanks again so much for your time. Yeah, thank you, John. 